Hello, in previous videos we've looked at resolving forces in directions and we've used force equals mass times acceleration and we've also used the SUVAT equations and in particular this one S equals UT plus half AT squared. So given that we know forces and the motions, i.e. velocity and position and acceleration are all vectors, can we do mechanics in vectors? And the answer to that's going to be yeah. And what we're going to do is just look at the vector forms of Newton's laws, the vector forms of the motion equations, and then you can pick and play with them as you go along. Okay, let's start off with our basic idea here in vectors. Here's a classic example we looked at earlier in the course. <clears throat> it's really a body going up an incline here, isn't it? Being pulled up the incline by a force P. It's got a reaction, normal reaction force, to it, which is offsetting a weight going down um, vertically. And we might have some frictional force there, yeah? So, what's F, F equals MA look like in vector form? Well, it just looks like F. I'm going to put the little zodella so under here. I've tried to show all the vectors in bold but i'm going to start putting some of those little symbols underneath so you can see that i mean that they're vectors so therefore the force vector equals mass times the acceleration vector yeah so if i want to find i find my resultant force rf um, by just summing up all these four forces that are operating on it and that force vector on the left hand side that's my f must equal mass times my acceleration vector. So I can just use that to find what my acceleration vector is. Well, here we can see that our dom that the um, we know that we're going up this hill and going in this direction, aren't we? Up this incline. So we know that our resultant force P must be um, resultant force must be in that direction. Um, that the R force and the W force going across must cancel out going that way. We know that and we did that in our earlier calculations. And then also our resultant force is up the hill in the direction of the acceleration vector. And if you think about that arrow, that effectively is pointing us in the direction of the acceleration vector. Okay, well, let's have a look at CVAT. Well, we've got five CVAT equations. Here's, here they are in there. Um, they're sort of linear form um, and for each one we can create a vector equivalent of those four yeah so I've got v equals u plus a t so I can just rewrite that as vector v equals vector u plus vector a times t yeah and the same here vector r equals vector u plus vector v over two all times by t and vector r there is going to be equal to vector u times the scalar t plus a half a that's a vector a times t t squared and the same here yeah so there we have it so they all look fairly straightforward and as you can see is they're linear on the left hand side they're linear on the right hand side but what about the fifth one hmm. well this isn't linear is it v squared equals um, u squared uh, plus 2as. Well, actually, it's an energy equation. And once you've looked at vector scalar products in other modules, we can see that v squared, either magnitude of v or squared, is v dot v, which must equal u dot u plus two lots of a dot r. If you think about that, those are energy. That's an energy equation, an energy and work equation. So we can come back to that another day. So let's have a look at how we could use these um, in a SUVAT environment. So here we have uh, of a projectile, yeah? So we've got a cricket ball, it's hit at 20 meters per second, and the angle is 60 degrees off the horizontal, yeah? So we're hitting it up like that, aren't we? 20 and 60 degrees, there we go. So how far will it travel? Yeah, that's the question. So let's start looking at things in vector form. Let's assume that we're starting from our initial position at the, our, our displacement. And the R vector is zero. Yeah. What's our initial velocity U? Well, our initial velocity is 20 um, cos 60 degrees. And there's our I vector. That's our horizontal. We use that. Don't we? I'm going to write that little so we can all see them. There's an I vector and there's a J vector. Oh, that's like moving around, isn't it? I enjoyed that, didn't it? There we go. And so that's our horizontal component. And here's our vertical component, 20 sine 60 in the J direction. 
What are we going to do about the acceleration? Well, we know it's a constant acceleration and the vector is A. And what is that vector? Well, it's m the magnitude is uh, minus G because it's, it's downward, isn't it, in the J direction. So I've got minus G in the J direction, yeah? Okay, so the one that we typically use is S equals um, UT plus half AT squared. In vector form, we call the displacement the R vector. Yeah, that's like our XY vector. I could write that as there, couldn't I? That's going to be my R vector. And I've got my UT plus half AT squared. So I can substitute in my initial uh, velocity U. I've got my acceleration here, vector there. And then I can rearrange it, can't I? So I've got all my I vectors together and all my J vectors together. So this term here, this component here is telling us what our position is going horizontally, isn't it? And this posi this um, component here is telling us what our vertical position is. Okay, so when's it going to land on the ground? Well, it's going to land on the ground when the coefficient of my vertical, that's my J vector equals zero. So there it is, the next line. That's got to equal zero. Well, we can see that T is a factor here, so can't we? So we've got two solutions to this quadratic. One is when T equals zero. That's the launch point. The other one is where the remainder of this should really not be there. Excuse me. Um, that shouldn't be there. That should be just like that. Yeah. So that's my, I could write that as a bracket, couldn't I, having taken my T out? That, that must equal zero. Now, if I rearrange that, I can find that t equals, um, there's my two, my g over 2 uh, reciprocal times by uh, 20 sine 60. And if I calculate that through, I get t equals 3.53 um, seconds. How far will I have traveled at that point? Well, we just need to substitute that value of t in. We already know that if we've got that right, that this term is 0. So we're only interested in the I component, um, and the T is 3.53. So my vector at that point, my displacement vector, is 35.3I, which, if we turn it into um, common sense, is that means that we've travelled 35.3 metres horizontally when it hits the ground. So there we go with that version. OK. Um, general motion, well, it just works in exactly the same way, except where we had S before, we've got this R vector. So I'm going to put the R little cedilla underneath for the re vector. And therefore, if I want to find out what my velocity vector is, I just differentiate with respect to T my R vector. And if I want to know what my acceleration is, I just differentiate my velocity vector. Yeah. So all my vectors still work exactly the same way. And if I want to do the integration, well, I just do it that way as well. So I can start off with my acceleration vector and I can integrate that to get my velocity vector. Remember to add a constant vector. So that's effectively the constant here is a vector and it's my initial velocity. Yeah? And then I can carry on from velocity to find my position, my displacement by integrating again, by integrating my V, integrating my velocity vector. And then I need to again add my constant. And my constant is going to be a form of a vector. So that vector is my initial position. So we're back to X and Y here, aren't we? There you go. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's use some examples of this. Um, another example, let's have a look at a, um, let's say we've got a satellite and it's orbiting the Earth. So here's my satellite and it's orbiting the Earth. There we go. That's my satellite. Its position is R and it's orbiting the Earth. So I've got, I know what my um, position vector is at any time, my displacement. Here I've got, it's got a radius of 100. So my, um, any time my X value, my I component is there we go my i component that's my i vector and that's my j vector is going to be the cos of and this time i'm going to assume it's turning at some rate which i'm going to use 2t to deal with okay so there is my setup i've got a certain amount of i certain amount of j and it's going around this circle yeah if i differentiate that vector up there 
I get my velocity vector, yeah? So um, using the chain rule here, in effect, we know, you know, we're differentiating cos, we're going to get sine, and as we've got chain rule, 2t is going to differentiate, we're going to get the 2 out the front. So we've got minus 200 there, um, sine, and then we've got plus 200 cos for the y component. And if I want to get my acceleration, well, I just do the same thing again, I just differentiate it. And at this point, I've now got minus 400 as the multiplier. Um, so that should be back to a cos, shouldn't it? That should be a cos. That should be a sine. So if we look at that, we can probably see fairly quickly that our acceleration vector is minus four times our original position vector, which is exactly what we'd expect to see, isn't it? With acceleration around a circular um, orbit is minus omega squared r. So there we go. So there's our minus omega squared coming out. So that was a pretty straightforward one there. Um, what if we wanted to go the other way? And we're starting off with some sort of general acceleration here. So I know that that's my acceleration function, 6ti plus 12t squared j. So if I want to start from my acceleration, I want to get uh, my velocity. Well, I just integrate that. So my 6t becomes 3t squared and my 12t squared becomes 4t cubed. And then I have to remember to add my constant, which is my, again, it's a vector constant. So it's my initial velocity. And then if I want to get to my displacement, well, I just integrate it again. So my 3t squared becomes a t cubed term and my um, 4t cubed becomes a t to the 4 term. And then I'm integrating my v naught, so I get v naught t. And then I have to remember to add on my initial uh, position or displacement in vector terms. That's going to be my r naught. So pretty well straightforward. Everything still works. So there you go. In summary, we can do all our mechanics if we want to work in 2D or even 3D, but we're, at this point we're doing 2D by um, doing just ordinary uh, vectors. We can do force equals mass x times acceleration, where my, the force is a vector and the acceleration is a vector. I can do all the SUVAT equations where all these um, V is a, a velocity vector, and as is U, A is an acceleration vector and r is our position or displacement vector so we can carry out all of that and then we can move backwards and forwards for general motion through using um, differentials of the vectors of r v and a or integrating going the other way to find out um, the values that we need remembering of course that our constants in the integration are effectively vector constants representing our initial velocity and our initial displacement so all pretty straightforward and quite easy to do in practice once you've got the idea. Have fun.